Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Concerns about how receptive Jamaicans will be to King Charles III as a new head of state. Desilting to take place at Raleigh Bridge in Hanover to prevent more flooding. And later in sports, is the school board football kicks off on Saturday. I'm Shane Masters and here are the details. King Charles III is expected to deliver his first official address to the world shortly. Now, he became king on Thursday following the death of his mother, Queen Elizabeth II. We are now ready for his official address. I renew to you all today, alongside the personal grief that all my family are feeling, we also share with so many of you in the United Kingdom, in all the countries where the Queen was head of state, in the Commonwealth and across the world, a deep sense of gratitude for the more than 70 years in which my mother, as Queen, served the people of so many nations. In 1947, on her 21st birthday, she pledged in a broadcast from Cape Town to the Commonwealth to devote her life, whether it be short or long, to the service of her peoples. That was more than a promise. It was a profound personal commitment which defined her whole life. She made sacrifices for duty. Her dedication and devotion as sovereign never wavered through times of change and progress, through times of joy and celebration, and through times of sadness and loss. In her life of service, we saw that abiding love of tradition, together with that fearless embrace of progress, which makes us great as nations. The affection admiration and respect she inspired became the hallmark of her reign. And as every member of my family can testify, she combined these qualities with warmth, humor, and an unerring ability always to see the best in people. I pay tribute to my mother's memory and I honor her life of service. I know that her death brings great sadness to so many of you, and I share that sense of loss beyond measure with you all. And we will continue to monitor his speech and will give you details in primetime news at 7. Successor to the British monarch, King Charles III, is now Jamaica's head of state. But will the new head of state be accepted by Jamaicans? As Sandy Williams reports, some experts believe there will be a different level of acceptance compared to that of the late Queen of England. The passing of Queen Elizabeth II, who was the monarch of the United Kingdom, triggered a change of Jamaica's head of state. This, as her eldest son, 73-year-old Charles, immediately became the reigning monarch. Constitutional expert Dr. Lloyd Barnett laments that Jamaica's head of state has changed without any local input. It's unfortunate because as an independent country, we should have a choice as to who becomes our head of state, whether it's an executive position or a formal position. And, you know, three years ago I pointed out that if we didn't do it, we would be in this position in which we have a person as our king who is not chosen by us. And I think that's most unfortunate for an independent nation. It is a legal consequence which we should have avoided because it was foreseen and foreseeable. Retired logistics and protocol consultant Colonel Merrick Needham says there could be increased negative reactions among Jamaicans to the new head of state, King Charles III. Mr. Needham explains that the fact that he is continuing the role of a foreign head of state may not sit well with 
with some. He believes that many Jamaicans were emotionally attached to the Queen due to her long reign, which spanned seven decades. But as for King Charles, Mr. Needham thinks there will be a different level of acceptance. The change from a queen to a king as monarch in theory should not mean any difference at all. Uh, king Charles III will be a very um, equable and, and, and acceptable um, replacement, but the concept, I think there's going to be uh, increasing objection that they have been accustomed to the queen, uh, most adults from childhood or earlier almost. Um, uh, it's a different thing um, for Prince Charles as King Charles. Mr. Needham was speaking on Radio Jamaica's Beyond the Headlines on Thursday. Sandy Williams, TVJ News. The government could be spending millions of dollars in the coming months in a bid to address the frequent flooding of the Riley Bridge in Hanover. The details in this report. Following the recent flooding at the Riley River Bridge in Hanover, the government has announced significant work plans for the area to prevent a recurrence. Last month, the bridge was blocked twice as bamboo from along the river banks were washed down during heavy rains, leading to the blockage and the subsequent flooding. On Thursday, Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Matthew Samuda, along with members of the National Works Agency, toured the area. He says some major works will have to be done to include desilting. As for the bamboos, we will have to put in place a collaborative maintenance program to ensure that the bamboo doesn't become a hindrance or a danger in the way that it did. Chairman of the Hanover Municipal Corporation, Sheridan Samuels, says program estimates are already in place to carry out the maintenance work for the bamboos along the river. The fundings are available and we are ready to, to go now. The only problem is that we identify that the bamboos are not really the problem that is really affecting the flooding. The, the, the bed of the river is so shallow and we have to do with some desilting of those of the river bed now. And that is the program that we, we are working on to get it there. Yeah. We, we, want to see, we want to see if it's going to cost um, more than what was, um, we were allowed to spend. Mr. Samuel says if allowed by the local government ministry, the funds in the special grant for repairs, SGR, will be used to get the work done. And we want to get it done because it is affecting all aspects of society right now. Yep. Socially, economically, tourist industry being affected. Tourists can move from Negril to Montego Bay to get back to airport. Citizens can get home from work during the evenings and we have to ensure that we get it done. So we are here, even if it is going to cause the, the municipal corporation to go bankrupt. In the meantime, there's another concern for Minister Samuda. He says there are too many residents who are living close to the river, which can be deadly if the river is in spate. We, we use a lot of the terms associated with climate change as buzzwords, but the reality is the climate has changed and Jamaica's weather patterns have changed which means we have to get our people to understand the concept of resilience and we have to get them to understand that some places that they have been for a long time are really not safe. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that area is unsafe and we will be discussing with the Prime Minister what options are available to us. He says while it's understood that people get attached to certain areas after living there for years, the safety of each and every Jamaican is of utmost importance. So it will be a long process and that's why we're here with the full political directorate to ensure we can have those conversations. It's also bad environmentally to have um, effluent discharge into, into any sort of waterway in the way that you would have with people living with such, in such close proximity to, to the river. And the reality is they're at danger. The river is deteriorating in terms of its own health because of that. So we'll have a lot of work to do. In the meantime, State Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister, Homer Davis, says as a long-term fix, a bypass is being considered for the area. What is happening in Lucy cannot be allowed to stand for much, much longer. And so we have to make the necessary provision from now so the people can understand that in not a distant future, the road bypass in Lucy will be a reality. And not only Lucy, I can speak to Opal also, 
We're looking at Oprel, we're even looking at Nigril to put the road more inland. Head of the Westmoreland Police, Senior Superintendent Wayne Josephs, is concerned that lottery scamming is becoming too normalized. He made the comments at a stakeholders' meeting on Thursday to discuss solutions to Westmoreland's crime problem, where he also noted that it's one of the reasons gangs are able to recruit students in schools. Krista Campbell has that story. The police commissioner in Westmoreland as stakeholders meet to decide how to address the latest upsurge in crime and violence in the parish. The commanding officer for the Westmoreland police says lottery scamming is increasingly a factor that's making it easier for gangs to recruit youngsters. Young men and women are now so socialized in getting this easy money that if the government and the private sector should provide 100% of jobs now. They are not interested because the money that they, will, that they will be working for to, to wait on for a week. That is something that they, 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 they expect that I dance and they expect to buy a drink. He says the breakdown in proper parenting is part of the problem and is supporting a call for parenting workshops to help address this latest crime wave in Westmoreland. Over time, some of the persons who are even decent law citizens. We find that they themselves sometimes have sons and nephews, cousins and so on who are involved in lottery scamming. And they are now buying into that notion that, oh, they are not doing anything wrong, they are just taking back the money that the white people stole from us in Spain. But the thing is, those files from the lottery scamming, they are buying guns and they are killing people. And he notes an increasing number of businesses indirectly benefit from the illegal activity. The largest scamming is booming. The security companies make more money because people are in fear. You find that hardware stores and so on, they sell more, 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 more steel, more sand, more cement because they are spending money and houses are building up. Uh, Morgs make more money. The, the car, the, 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 the used car places, they make money because you see they have all the boxes and 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 and, uh, and, and markets is out there. The police commissioner has pledged increased police presence as part of the new crime plan for Westmoreland. Krista Campbell, TVJ News. The St. Mary Police say they have made a breakthrough in the theft of solar panels in the parish on Emancipation Day, August 1. One person has been arrested so far. Head of the St. Mary Police Division, Superintendent Bobette Morgan Simpson, says operations were carried out in the Cape Clear area, where two persons were interviewed separately and one arrested. And we apologize for the audio on that clip. And it's now time for the Business Minute. More local banks have set timelines indicating when they will stop accepting 20 and 50 pound banknotes. Sajikor and First Global Banks will cease accepting the paper notes effective September 30, the same time set for the notes to be removed as legal tender by the Bank of England. Scotia Bank announced recently it will stop accepting the notes as of September 19. The paper notes are being replaced by polymer notes, which are already in circulation. The Bank of Jamaica has said it will accept the banknotes even after the cutoff date set by the Bank of England. In business internationally, the European Central Bank, ECB, hiked interest rates by a record three quarters of a percentage point on Thursday. The move will take the benchmark rate for the 19 countries using the euro to 0.75%. It follows the central bank's first hike since 2011 in July when rates were increased to zero after years in negative territory. The ECB said in a statement that it expects the hike rates over the next several meetings because inflation remains far too high and is likely to stay above target for an extended period. 
And this Sunday, we're bringing down the heat with Paleta Fruit Sticks. In the Business Review, we'll hear how a small frozen delight business has created an alternative way to make consuming fruits more fun and refreshing. That's it for the Business Minute this week. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. And it's now time for the top regional and international stories with Sandra Williams. In the region, a new United Nations report has warned that at the current rate, Latin America and the Caribbean will not achieve the education goals set by the UN's 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean, ECLAC, says the Education Transformation Summit, which will take place on September 19 at the United Nations headquarters in New York, will provide a global forum to take stock of the efforts needed to recover pandemic-related learning losses, reimagine education systems for today's and tomorrow's world, and revitalize national and global efforts to achieve Sustainable Development Goal 4. On the international scene, King Charles III will be proclaimed at the Accession Council at 10 a.m. in London and 5 a.m. at Eastern Time on Saturday in the State Apartments of St. James Palace. The Accession will be followed by the Principal Proclamation, which will be read at 11 a.m. local time from the balcony overlooking Fire Court at St. James Palace in the British capital. The Proclamation will be read by Garter King of Arms, accompanied by Earl Marshall, other officers of arms, and the sergeants at arms. This is the first public reading of the proclamation. A second proclamation will be read out at the Royal Exchange at noon on Sunday. Further proclamation will be read out in Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales at the same time. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Sandy Williams. And that's the Midday News. I'm Machine Masters. Join us at 7 for Prime Time News. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, have a good afternoon.